Hey everyone, it's me again, and I am in a new, very strange filming location because I decided to do something a little bit different this week. I've been wanting to incorporate more kind of burlesque type things into my channel because I am a burlesque performer and I want to let you guys in on a little bit of what I do. Um, so I decided to make a video today going over a little bit of costuming technique. Now, as a disclaimer, I am not a costumer. I can't sew for shit, but I know how to fake it till I make it. And I'm hoping you guys learn something cool from this video. So. This particular video in question, we're going to be going over the technique of putting rhinestones on a costume. This is like burlesque 101. I mean, um, a lot of people would make the argument that you cannot have burlesque without rhinestones. Like the, the, the sparkle factor is a big deal in, in the burlesque art form. Uh, so I'm gonna teach you guys my method of putting rhinestones on a costume. It's not perfect. I could probably come up with a better method if I were in the States and had access to more materials, but I may do with what I have. So the first thing you're gonna need for this project are rhinestones. Now, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, Swarovski or bust, Swarovski or nothing. Now, Swarovski rhinestones are gorgeous. They're beautiful, but they're super, super expensive. One gross of rhinestones, which for those of you not in the know, one gross equals 144 rhinestones. So one gross of rhinestones that are Swarovski crystals can run as much as $30. And for big projects like, you know, stoning a gown, for example, you're gonna need way more than just a gross. I mean, one gross of rhinestones won't even cover an entire pasty for me. So I personally like using resin rhinestones. You can find really good quality resin rhinestones online and they're a lot cheaper. The ones I'm gonna be using today, I got from summerray.com. Uh, I'll leave the link to their website in the description box. I made both my pair of, pairs of pasties for my acts using those stones. I've stoned my undergarments for these acts with these stones, and I've stoned my gown here with these stones. Now they are not anywhere near as sparkly as Swarovski's obviously, but they're pretty damn close, and honestly, they're stupid cheap. Compare, you know, $30 for 144 crystals. Uh, in this particular order, I got four different types of crystals, 1,000 stones per color, and all of that was 20 bucks. 4,000 stones for less than the cost of one gross of Swarovski, so you do the math. The ones I will be using today are the four millimeter size, in light gold. You can kind of see them right there. I keep them in a bag because these are pretty small and very, very easy to lose. You're going to need a pair of tweezers. Now, you can use standard uh, cosmetic tweezers. I've used that with some, su some success, but I personally like these. These are tweezers specifically designed to apply rhinestones. I like the fact that they have a bend in the top to provide a little bit more control, and I like the fact that they are very, very thin and small near the tip, which is going to help when applying very, very tiny rhinestones. And then you're gonna need adhesive. Now, there's a bunch of different adhesives you could try. Um, I would not recommend hot glue for applying rhinestones because a lot of these rhinestones, particularly the resin ones, have a backing that will melt off if you use hot glue or anything with heat. And my favorite glue for applying rhinestones is Gemtac. Now, if you've been in the burlesque industry for any length of time, you will know what Gemtac is. Uh, Gemtac I like because it does not dry right away. In fact, it takes 24 hours to cure completely, but it'll be pretty stiff in about 30 minutes, but it gives you plenty of playtime. So if you put a rhinestone in the wrong place, you can kind of shove it around and, you know, put it where you need to put it. But I like it because it is permanent. I have not had a rhinestone fall off from this. Uh, beyond that, you will also need a pencil. It can be any kind of pencil, it really doesn't matter. Uh, all I'm using this pencil for is to mark out my design, which is going to be the first step that I'm gonna get to here in a second. So let me zoom in and we'll go ahead and get started. So here's my garment that I'm going to be stoning today. Uh, I've put it upside down so I can go ahead and start from the bottom corner. That's just to make things easier to film, but you don't have to do it that way. Um, what I'm gonna be going for is something like the design I've done up here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is a giant spider web 
that I made last night with darker antique gold colored stones. And I'm gonna be putting one up here near the top corner, spreading downward. So step one is to flatten out your garment as best you can. Uh, ideally, you would have a workspace that's like a hard table. I have my couch. So now we're gonna draw in our design. Um, for that, you will need your friendly neighborhood pencil. Your pencil doesn't have to be completely sharp. You know, mine's kind of a nub right now. But I'm gonna start at the top corner here, and I'm going to draw a line straight down, and that's going to be my initial line. I'm gonna have to do this left-handed. Oh, am I the only one whose hands go derpy when I have to use my non-dominant hand? There we go. Now this does not have to be a perfectly straight line. It does not have to be a dark line. It just has to be an initial line because this is just gonna be your guide. This is gonna be kind of where you want the stones to lie. So after that's done, I'm gonna kind of take a look and draw a second line coming out right nearby like that. So basically this is the beginnings of your spider web. It's gonna start at one central point in the back and spread out toward the bottom. Now you can make as many lines as you have room to do. You don't have to make a whole crap load of them, honestly. Um, I think spider webs look the best when they're not terribly busy. But now that you've got your establishing lines kind of set up, you're going to take your pencil and you're going to draw a curved line from the top here all the way around to meet the other lines. So you're gonna start at the top and swoop downward and then back up. And there you go. And then you're gonna do the same thing from that line to the second line you made. And then you're gonna do the same thing again from that line all the way around to the end. You don't even have to do this if you're making a really small design or just covering an entire garment in rhinestones. But if you're making a very specific shape like this, I would highly recommend drawing a guideline first. And we're gonna start applying the glue. I've got my gem tack here. Now with gem tack, you see you've got this little kind of nub at the end that you stick a needle into to open up the glue. Um, sometimes that nub can get clogged. So if you notice that you're squeezing and squeezing this bottle and glue is not coming out, then just like stick a needle or a pin in the top and kind of wiggle it around a little bit and that should get rid of the clog. I like using old earrings for this. Like if I have, you know, a, a stud that I'm not gonna be wearing anymore, I'll just stick the stud down in there and wiggle it around and then pull it out and that'll get rid of the clog. So at this point, we're gonna knock the glue down to the bottom and then we're gonna make our first line. Now, you have a lot of playtime with this, but don't put too much glue down initially because it'll probably harden up before you can get a chance to do anything with it. So I'm gonna kind of start from the second set of curvy lines I made. So you can see these little skips here where the glue has not quite landed. That's why it's good to take this pretty slowly just to get everything because you want a straight line of glue. And this stuff is pretty tough to get out sometimes. So don't panic if it's not coming out right away. Um, it can do that. I like to keep a towel or a tissue around to wipe off the top to avoid clogging. So now that we've got our glue down, don't rush yourself. You don't have to work terribly quickly at this. I'm gonna take my stones and I'm going to grab just like a little fingerful. You know, as many as you try and predict what you think you'll need, but realistically, you'll probably pull out more than you need. And that's not a big deal. So I'm gonna take my tweezers and I'm going to grab just whatever stone is facing up, like so. You can't see that. There you go. And I'm going to start up at the top here, and I'm just going to plant the stone on the glue. The Gem Tack bottle says not to press down on these, but I like to press down a little tiny bit. And then I'm going to leave a little space between the two of them, just because that's how I want the design to look. And I'm going to place the next stone. Make sure to clean your tweezers before you do this too because sometimes your stones will get stuck to your tweezers before they'll get stuck to your fabric. A lot of people use wax pencils to do this, and it's probably a lot easier to do it that way, but I tried to order a set of wax pencils on Amazon, and um, they don't ship overseas. So, for some reason, I'm not sure why, but 
They won't ship those to APOs, so I'm stuck with what I got, which is a pair of tweezers and a prayer. Oh, God. Try and keep calm. Put some music on. Or put on your favorite Faith Grenade playlist. Now that your glue line is run out and you've got those stones there, this is basically just repeating the process. So you're just going to go glue, stones, glue, stones, glue, stones, until you've got the line stretched out as far as you want it to go, and then you start on the next line, and the next line, and so on and so on and so forth. Put down some glue. And there you go. There is my first line done. It looks a little bit bendy and a little bit wonky, but that's only because of the way the garment is laying on the couch. It'll be pretty damn straight when I finally decide to move the garment. But there you go. That's the first line. You just made your first dry and standing. Woohoo! Congratulate yourself. Pat yourself on the back real quick and then keep it moving. So that is what your line should look like when it's done. Now you can choose to do lines around the perimeter of the garment here and here if you would like. That's up to you. I did do it with the bottom uh, spider web that I've made already, but pretty much you're going to start with these long straight guidelines and then move into the small curvy lines just like you did when you were drawing out the pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the second line here right next door. If you're not comfortable with doing this right away, on a garment, particularly if it's a base garment that you've either sewn yourself and have a lot of attachment to, or a garment that you bought that was very expensive, um, find a scrap piece of fabric somewhere around your house, you know, maybe a pair of jeans you don't wear as much anymore, or something else that you wouldn't mind messing up on, and practice. Let me know if you guys like these kinds of videos, by the way, and I will make more. As I said in the disclaimer earlier, I am not a costumer at all, <laughs> but you know, these are things that I really had to learn out of necessity because I can't sew, but it is extremely expensive to order custom made garments from costumers, so. You fake it till you make it. So when you run into a big old seam like this, just kind of hop over it and place the glue right nearby. I really hope you guys can see this. I'm really not sure how well my camera is uh, capturing what I'm doing here. If you notice that your stones are sticking to your tweezers, which is definitely not good, just kind of clean your tweezers off with your friendly neighborhood towel. I found a makeup wipe works really well for this too. If you have makeup wipes or baby wipes laying around, just, you know, give them a good wipe down every now and again, because they will get glue on them. It's unavoidable, but you don't want to be in a situation where your stones are sticking to your tweezers and not the fabric. And the possibilities are endless once you've kind of mastered the basic technique here. You can really use different colors of stones, different sizes of stones to make your garments stand out. And there we go. There's my first two lines. Now, I could go on and on and on all day, but uh, honestly, I'm going to run out of battery life on this camera probably pretty soon, and let's be honest, it's going to be pretty boring to sit here for an hour and a half and watch me glue stuff down to this. So rather than doing that, I'm going to go ahead and do a curved line uh, just to show you guys how to do it. And we'll go ahead and show you what the finished product looks. So now we're going to start with the curved lines really quickly. 
just to show you guys how to do this. I like to start with my largest, longest, most obnoxious curved lines first, just because I know those are going to take up the most stones and they're going to show the most. So I'm gonna start with this one right in the middle. The pencil mark is just about right there. And basically it's the same thing. We're just gonna draw a curved line with our glue. This is why I like having a pencil guideline there, because I know I would not want to do this free-handed. And then connect it to where your other line is. And then we're going to start placing. You're just going to follow your glue line, kind of pushing and moving things around as you need to. And there is your curved line. And now I'm going to show you guys what a finished one looks like. All right, guys, so here is a close-up of one that I finished earlier through the magic of television. Um, this is what your finished product should look like. Very, very spiderwebby. Again, you can add more straight lines or curved lines if you want to. This one has a ton of straight lines, whereas my one up there is only gonna have a few. But there's an example. These lines are, the stones are also a lot closer together, mostly because this was like one of the first ones I'd really done on the garment itself. And I kind of <laughs> overestimated how many stones I had left. I didn't really have a whole lot left, so. But you live and you learn, and from far away it still looks pretty darn convincing. Now if you wanted to make this even more convincing, if you're doing a spider web design, you can go ahead and put a fake plastic spider in the middle or on one of the sides of your web. That'd be really fun too. So there it is, you guys. That is how I put rhinestones on costumes. Now, this is not limited to, you know, uh, the design I just did. You can do hearts, you can do stars, you can do... Um, I've seen people recreate like Leonardo da Vinci paintings on garments. I haven't gotten to that level yet, but I just wanted to teach you guys the basics of how to glue rhinestones to an existing garment. This does not have to be for burlesque either. You can rhinestone... Uh, as soon as you learn this technique, you're gonna want to put stones on all the things. Like... <laughs> You can use this to bedazzle, you know, a pair of jeans or a pair of shoes. Uh, it, I found it's really cute if you have like a, a pair of um, stiletto pumps to make the heel entirely encrusted in rhinestones. Oh yeah. You could rhinestone your glasses case. You can rhinestone your book bag for back to school. The possibilities really are endless. And I would show you guys some more of the garments, but that would ruin the surprise for the people coming to my shows, wouldn't it? So I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. If if you did, there's a button for that. Spank that like button in the butt. You know it deserves it. And if you want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button and become a member of the faithful today. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Toodles!